Hi, I'm Sam Crawford, a service technician here at Intellimeter Canada. And on behalf of Intellimeter, I'd like to welcome you to our video training series. In this particular video, we are going to be covering the installation process for the iMeter EM3. So before we dive into the installation process, let's just take a quick moment to identify some of the parts that you should have received. So in your package, you should have the iMeter EM3 itself, depending on what was purchased, possibly an automation module, which would be inserted in this area here. You will have a set of CTs, complete with labels both on the CT side and on the CT lead side. And lastly, our CT programming USB dongle. This tells the meter which type of CTs are being used with it. Take a quick look at your paperwork that was provided and make sure that you have all the parts that you should have. So before we move forward with the installation of the CTs, let's just take a quick moment to uh, go over some of the properties of the CTs themselves in relation to the EM3 meter. Now the EM3 meter is capable of single phase, two phase, and three phase metering for one metering point. That being said, each CT is designated for a certain phase. CT1 is designated for phase A or line one. CT2 is for phase B or line two and CT3 is for phase C or line 3. This information can be found on the labels both on the CT and the CT lead. Now that we know what each CT is for, let's go ahead with the installation of the CTs. Now keep in mind that here we have built a mock-up panel for the sake of this demonstration video. In real life application, you would want to ensure that any electrical equipment or panel is locked off before opening and performing any work. If work must be performed on a live electrical panel or equipment, please ensure that you are wearing the appropriate protective gear, such as an arc flash suit, complete with helmet and gloves. First of all, we're going to locate the circuit, load, or breaker that needs to be metered. In this case, we're going to use CTs 1, 2, and 3 to meter the main load that feeds the breaker panel. If you wanted to meter a three-pull breaker, CTs could be located at circuits 1, 3, and 5, or really any other three-pull breaker within the rating of the CT. Note the direction arrow on the CTs. This arrow must point in the same direction as a flow of current. So in this case, the arrows must point in towards the breakers as current flows in from the top of the panel down into the breakers. You can use adhesive mounting pads in combination with zip ties to hold the CTs firmly in place. So our CTs for the iMeter EM3 are now in place to meter the main load. If you wanted to install our CTs on a breaker load, a phase test would be required. So to do this test, we are going to have to first energize the panel and temporarily turn all the breakers to their on positions. We are then going to take a multimeter, set it to check for alternating voltage, and we're going to start by placing one of our probes on phase A or line 1 main feed. We're then going to take our other probe and place it on what we believe to be phase A on the breaker. So if we have zero volts difference here, we know that this top pole is phase A. If it was any other phase, we would have a voltage difference, and in a panel like this, it would be roughly 208 volts. So here we have zero volts difference. Here we have 208, and here we have 208. Once again, here we have zero, so we know that the top pole here is phase A. Moving on to phase B. Here we have 208 volt difference, here we have 0 volts difference, and here we have 208. So we know that the middle pole here, or the second pole down, is phase B. Moving on to phase C. Here we have 208 volts difference, here we have 208 volts difference, and here we have 0 volts difference. So we know that the third pole down is phase C. We're going to want to repeat this phase test for every line that we have CTs installed on. Once all the phasing is identified, we can go ahead and install our CTs. To check the phasing of a panel that is not yet energized, you will have to rely on a continuity test. First of all, isolate the panel from any transformers that might be up or downstream of the panel. Once the panel is isolated, you're going to temporarily turn the breaker to its on position. Take your multimeter and set it to check for continuity. You're going to take one probe and place it on line one or phase A main feed. And you're going to take your other probe and place it on what you believe to be 
phase A or line one on the breaker. If we have continuity, and as you can hear we do, we know that this is phase A. If there was no continuity, then it would not be phase A and you'd have to carry through the breaker until you found phase A. Repeat the process for phase B and phase C. If the panel was energized, you can perform a voltage test. So you're going to take your multimeter and set it to alternating voltage. And once again, place one probe on phase A or line one main feed. And take your other probe and place it on what you believe to be phase A or line one on the breaker. If it's phase A, you will have zero volts difference. If it's any other phase, you will have a voltage difference. In a panel like this, it would be a voltage difference of about 240 volts. So once again, repeat the process for phase B and phase C. Let's pretend for a second that we wanted to install the CTs on a three-pole breaker. So once again, you're going to have to repeat the phase test that we covered earlier for the breaker intended and install the CTs accordingly. But keep in mind that for CTs installed on breakers, the arrow has to point away from the breaker. Unlike the mains, which point in, breaker CTs point out as current flows out from the breaker towards the load. Now it's time to install our reference voltage. The reference voltage is used to both power the meter up as well as provide the meter with reference to the different voltage phases. So because we are using three phase metering, a separate three pole 15 amp breaker is required for the reference voltage. Repeat the phase test that we went over earlier for the breaker intended for the reference voltage and once the phasing is identified, go ahead and install your lines. Make sure to use colored wire specific to your local electrical code. In Canada, we use red for line one or phase A, black for line two or phase B, blue for line three or phase C, and lastly white for neutral. So you're going to terminate one end of the wires into the uh, breaker and neutral block and run them back to the, to the meter enclosure. So now that we have our CTs installed as well as our reference voltage, we are now safe to pull all the wires through the conduit and into the meter enclosure. So as you can see, we now have our CT leads and reference voltage wires pulled through the conduit into the enclosure. For the sake of this demonstration video, we have pulled them through the one conduit, but personally, I would suggest adding another conduit to keep your reference voltage and CT lead separate. But for now, we're just using the one. So you're gonna use a precision screwdriver to terminate your CT leads into the terminal strips. Here we're using the bottom terminal strip for CTs one, two, and three. We use black for negative and white for positive. So as you terminate them into the terminal strip, you're going to want to double check your labels on the CT leads to ensure that each CT lead is in its correct slot. For the reference voltage, we use fork connectors. So loosen off the terminal screws. Be careful not to over loosen them as the screws can easily fall out. And go ahead and terminate your neutral line one, line two, and line three wires. Once everything is terminated, give each one a little gentle tug to make sure that they're all firmly seated inside the terminals. Lastly, we are going to plug in our USB CT programming dongle. Plug it into the CT key slot. Once again, this USB dongle tells the meter which type of CTs are being used with it. So now that everything is installed, it's time to discuss troubleshooting techniques using the meter display. As you can see, the iMeter EM3 is now powered up and we have load information showing on the display. Now the display cycles between kilowatt hours and kilovolt ampere hours, but from a troubleshooting standpoint, we are mainly concerned with the LEDs located above the meter display. However, in order to perform this troubleshooting, you must first put load on the circuit, breaker, or feeds that you are metering. Any load above one amp per phase should suffice. The first and last red blinking LEDs, marked P1 and P2, are pulse indicators. The heavier the load, the faster they will blink. 
the two middle green LEDs marked M1KWH and M1KVAH indicate what is being displayed on the meter at that given time. When the M1KWH light is on, kilowatt hours are being displayed. When the M1KVAH light is on, kilovolt ampere hours are being displayed. Lastly, the amber LEDs, both marked R1, are reverse indicators. If these LEDs are blinking, it indicates that there is a problem with the installation of one, two, or all of the CTs, or possibly with the reference voltage. As you can see, here we have blinking amber lights. As I just mentioned, this tells us that there is a problem with the installation of one, two, or all of the CTs, or possibly with the reference voltage. So you can start by checking CT1, making sure that, this, that the CT is not installed in a reverse direction. Remember that the arrow on the CT label must point in the same direction as current flow. The blinking amber LEDs can also be a result of the CT leads being reversed at the terminals inside the meter. Make sure that the black CT lead wire is in the negative terminal and the white CT lead wire is in the positive terminal. You can then repeat these checks for CT2 and CT3. So if everything just mentioned checks out, then there is most likely a problem with the reference voltage. You can repeat the phase test that was covered previously in this video and ensure that line one on your reference voltage is on phase A and that, and that CT1 is installed on phase A as well. Document your findings and if needed, make corrections accordingly. All the same goes for line two for CT2 on phase B and line three for CT3 on phase C. At this point, the iMeter EM3 should be fully installed and ready to use without any automation. Instructions for adding automation will be covered in a separate video, but for now, the EM3 meter should be fully functional and ready to use for manual reads. Thanks for tuning in to our demonstration video. Once again, I'm Sam Crawford, and we'll see you next time.